Okay, welcome to the segment where it's the longest title ever of a segment. Entropy change of an ideal gas, or rather ideal gases, in isentropic process. The big thing that I didn't really talk about so far is this guy, isentropic. I talked about isothermal, right? These are just process. How do I go? Isothermal means temperature is constant, right? I have isobaric, I have isochoric, etc. All these polytropic. So we have these. But this is another isentropic. And it's not going to come to your surprise that this means that delta S is zero. Okay, the entropy doesn't change. I want to go back to the uh, you know initial uh, segment or two. Uh, so we talked about this uh, plus S gen, the, the principle of ent entropy generation. And I said S gen is equal to zero if this is uh, reversible, right? The process, we talked about this. And what happens if this is uh, adiabatic? So this uh, Q will be zero if adiabatic, isn't it? So now what happens, you can see over here is um, uh, this is the summation of the right hand sides. You can see if a process is reversible plus adiabatic, then I will get this right hand side, uh, both of uh, this is zero, this is zero, so my I will get a get an isentropic process is equal to isentropic okay please note that this doesn't go this way if it is isentropic it doesn't mean it must be reversible and adiabatic I'll explain in a minute but if it is reversible and adiabatic it is isentropic okay um, that is one option for me to have an isentropic process there are actually two options that I can do this is one, one option if I have reversible and adiabatic I'm good to go the second thing is um, it's pure math so if I have S gen which is a positive value right must be is equal to minus of this integral of uh, basically this again pure math so if this is a negative of s gen s minus s gen plus s gen so i can still get zero okay so the reason why i'm spending a you know a particular segment on an isentropic process is that um, if i have a turbine as an example the maximum uh, work output that i can get from that particular turbine is for isentropic you may recall this is very similar to the conversation we have in the previous uh, module 6 where I talk about Carnot efficiency, right? So, I'm, and we said that it has to be reversible, has the maximum efficiency of a heat engine, right? It's kind of like that, right? Um, if I have a compressor, I need to put some, or let's say that this is uh, your fridge, right? Um, this will tell me the minimum amount of input that I need to have. So for instance, if I am interested in the absolute the lowest, how much the, the fridge is going to cost me, a particular fridge, this uh, isentropic process will be the benchmark for me for that. Okay, so that's very important. And I will solve a question to illustrate this, but for a turbine, if I ask you what is the absolute maximum power that I can obtain, I'm talking about assume isentropic. Okay, and same thing for the compressor or the reverse uh, Carnot cycle uh, system. So it will be the minimum work that I need to put into a system, okay? Okay, we have a chit chat. I think we know about this isentropic now. So let's get to business, which is a little bit more boring, okay? CV average. I'm writing the first relationship from the uh, TDS relationship applied to the ideal gas from the previous segment, okay? So I already drive these. So now the question is, um, if it is isentropic, so this, this becomes zero. Okay, that's nice. Um, so I want to look at this LN, uh, the, 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 because the thing is, I'm going to move this to this side of the equation as a negative. And my question is this, LN T2 by T1, and I want to write this this way, LN T2 minus LN T1. If I have a negative sign in front of it, I have a negative sign, because I'm moving this guy to this side, it has a negative in front of it. So this will be then a negative of uh, this, right? Negative of that. So I can write this then ln t1 minus ln t2, right? And if I write this, this will be ln t1 by t2. Again, this is math that I'm showing. So basically, the thing I, what I'm showing is negative of an ln term becomes, you see the numerator versus denominator, they just swap, right? So, okay, then cv average times ln of t1 by t2, you see? Is equal to R ln V2 by V1 and I'm gonna leave ln T1 by T2 like this and move this R by CV average um, times ln this right I'm simply copy pasting from the above thing 
So now what I will do is I need to obtain this, uh, you know, you can leave it like this. You can just, uh, you know, move this around, but there is more convenient for me if I simply go ahead and use this relationship from module four, right? This was given to me. And the goal is to find is I have a denominator CV. So I'll try to divide both sides of the equation by CV. So it's going to be like CV, CV by CV is one plus R by CV, right? And if I have one R by CV, then it will be uh, CP by CV minus one, right? And another thing that we discussed in module four was the specific heat ratio, K, specific heat ratio. And this specific heat ratio uh, was CP by CV. You can see how convenient it is just to plug in over there. Okay, and I actually explained to you that if as a monoatomic gases, like single atom uh, gases, this K is equal to 1.667. If it's a diatomic uh, gases and air included, this K is 1.4. So that's why it has a significance there. I'm talking about 300 uh, Kelvin uh, values. Okay, so you can see this becomes K. So, okay, so then this whole thing becomes K minus 1, right? So let's write it that way. So ln T1 by T2 is equal to K minus 1 ln uh, specific volume 2 by uh, specific volume 1. So I can move this K, K minus 1 to the uh, right over here as a power, right, for an ln. So ln T1 by T2 is equal to ln specific volume 2 divided by specific volume 1 to the power of K minus 1. So now what I will do is I'll take this e to the power of this, e to the power of that, okay? So can I do it? Well, why not? It is simply math, right? e to the power. And I want to highlight that e to the power of ln x is equal to x, okay? Um, so then from here I get myself t1 by t2 is equal to specific volume 2 by specific volume 1 to the power of k minus 1. So this is the first isentropic relationship okay um, actually once I have one uh, equation like this I get myself this right PV is equal to RT once you have this relationship as you have PV RT you can just plug it into anywhere you want if you want to have a P versus V you can get that too okay because now I can replace, well, let's do the T part so I can, you can see what I'm talking about. Um, so I don't want to have a T, the, the relationship you can see is T and uh, specific volume, right? But I want to have P and specific volume. Can I do it? Sure, why not, right? I have an equation. So let's do this. T1 by T2 is equal to V2 by V1 times V2 by V1. Wait a second, I'll write the, you see, this is fine, right? And I can write this this way, V2 by V1 to the power of K and this to the power of minus 1 because upside down. So it's going to be this, right? I just simply uh, turned it around. And I will use this and simply go ahead and uh, replace T because I don't want to have a T. So that will be P1 V1 by R divided by nuclear what I'm doing. I'm simply writing T is equal to P times V divided by R. P times V divided by R. I'm simply doing that. And for the second one, P2, V2 by R. Okay, let's see. These cancel. will be equal to V2 by V1 to the power of K times this by this, right? Um, do you see these two cancel? And these two cancel too. So what I get here is I get myself P1 by P2 is equal to this by uh, specific volume uh, ratio to the power of k. So this is your second isentropic relationship. Obviously for ideal gases only, right? One thing I want to highlight that this looks kind of like uh, PV to the power of uh, k is equal to constant, isn't it? Look at this. P1, V1 to the power of k is equal to P2, V2 to the power of k. So do you remember that? This was a poly tropic process okay one thing i want to highlight is not every polytropic process is isentropic okay so if it is isentropic then this relationship can be said it's not other way around if it's polytropic it's not isentropic okay and isentropic is is very specific in the polytropic i said this power to the power of n i had an n over here to the power of n 
right? This n is general. I can have 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, whatever. But if it coincides with this k is equal to uh, cp by cv, where is it? Uh, here, uh, which is also 1.4 for, for instance, for um, air, then it is isentropic. Okay, so it is. Uh, just want you to uh, be aware of that. And I'm not going to do it, but you can go ahead and play with these, and you can see. You see this. All you're doing is you use one of the isentropic relationship and just replace whatever you need, okay? And I'm going to write it as an input to you. So T times V to the power of K minus 1 is constant in case you need it, okay? And T P to the power of 1 minus K by K is constant too. So in case you, you know, ever refer, these, these are the most uh, common version. But in case you get, uh, you know, this uh, thrown it your way, so you still, still have them, okay, in case you need them, okay? So now let me go ahead and solve a question, okay? As usual, let me write the question statement, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So let's go ahead and read the question. 500 grams, so it looks very, very similar to what we did in the last segment as well. Uh, you know, these are some things that I prepared just to, you know, get us going. Uh, Pascal. T is 300 Kelvin, right? 27 Celsius is 300 Kelvin. Goes through a compression in a frictionless sealed piston cylinder device. So far, so good. It's very similar to what we talked about. If the final pressure is twice the initial pressure, so far, so good. It's the same thing as uh, before, state one. State two, P is equal to 400 kilopascals. Calculate the minimum important amount of work that is required for this compression process. So I'm uh, asking you, what is the minimum amount of work that I require to put in? And I gave you three different approaches, A, B, and C, okay? You can read it yourself, but in part A, I'm going to take the CV as a 300 uh, Kelvin, and uh, part B, I'm going to take the proper approach of looking at different varying temperatures, and in part C, is we have a table available at the Chengal 9th edition, appendix 1, and, you know, read some uh, numbers off of that, okay? So, um, the question uh, immediately, as uh, you know, you may have guessed, because I, or I just talked about this, is uh, isentropic process is going to give me the minimum amount of work that I need to put in. And also, the, if this was like a work extraction device, then it's going to give me the maximum amount. So, I'm going to call this isentropic, okay? And what I mean by isentropic is I'm going to go out and say that this is going to be adiabatic um, and reversible, okay? So that will be one condition we talked about too, but I'll focus on that one at this point, okay? So uh, let's look at, uh, by using part A, um, I look at table, that's what it says, I'm looking at what they want me to look at. Um, so T is equal to 300 Kelvin, so from there I will read my CV to be 0 0.718 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin, and I also read K, you will see why in a minute, 1.4, okay, it's listed over there. So now I go back to the earlier, uh, you know, section of this particular segment where I want to get some information about my, um, you know, the temperature because I know the second uh, pressure you can see over here. P2 is known, P1 is known, but T2 is not known. And I derive an expression for you to use T2 by T1 will be equal to P2 by P1 and to the power of K minus 1 divided by K, right? It is, uh, you know, right up here. Where is it? Here, right? But, you know, I, I, I moved the P to the other side, so when I move this to the other side, there's a negative sign, because K minus Y divided by K, right? Um, anyways, so then the only thing that I don't know over here is the T2. So I'm going to look at the 300 Kelvin. This P2 by P1 is 2, right? And I'm doubling it. And this K is 1.4, right? Uh, it's given in the table A1, uh, or rather A2A. Right, so this is 1.42. So the only unknown in this particular question is T2, and I uh, calculate it, I get to be 365.7 um, Kelvin. So the matter of the fact turned out to be that this temperature change is not huge. Okay, if you look at the previous segment, for instance, I get this second temperature to be 600 Kelvin, right? And I'm already looking at things at 300 Kelvin, uh, so it's not uh, gonna make a huge difference in my opinion, uh, you know, A, B, or or C. So A may be just okay for this particular case. So let's look at the first law. So U net minus W net. The reason why I'm writing is I'm asking about W net component, delta E. This is delta U, delta KE, delta PE, stationary system, so it becomes delta U. 
So it says adiabatic, so I'm assuming that uh, isentropic is adiabatic, so no heat transfer. So from here you can see my dub minus W net, and I said that it's gonna to be in. So this is defined as out versus in. I'm not gonna repeat, uh, but I discussed this already. So as this is in, this is gonna be W in like this, okay? Because W out is zero, you know, like this. W is cancelled, so I get myself W in will be equal to M U2 minus U1. So now you would appreciate why I'm looking at different things. The, the, the first option is I look at this W in will be M C V, right? And I'm gonna take it at 300. That's what the, the question tells me, T2 minus T1, okay? And if I do it, I'll get this W in to be 0 0.5 kilogram times 0 0.718 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin times delta T is 65.7 Kelvin, right? Delta T. Um, so if I punch this into the calculator, I get this to be 23.58 kilojoules. That's option A, right? Option B looks uh, actually quite similar to uh, option A, uh, this was A. Let's look at part B. In the part B, I'll still have the same W in will be M, but this time it tells me to use the average temperature that I need to, um, you know, uh, look at. Okay. In order to do that, I have to look at this T, 300, um, 350, and 400. Those are uh, reported in table 2AB. And I look at the CV, 0 0.718, 0 0.721, 0 0.726. Okay. And the proper method of doing this is you go you go and do an interpolation to get this particular temperature. This is T2. And I actually go and find the CV value. I'm not going to show the details, but I get 0 0.72257. So that will be my CV at 365.7 degrees. And I'm lucky in the sense that T at 300 is uh, supplied to me. So WN will be 0 0.5 kilograms. And CV average will be, let's write it over here, CV at 300 plus CV at 365.7 divided by 2. So I'll write that 0 0.718 plus 0 0.72257 divided by 2, right? That is the average times T2 minus T1 will be T365 minus 300 um, Kelvin. Oh, I didn't, you know, I hope you have seen it. This is 365.7 minus 300, so I took a shortcut over here. But anyways, when all said and done, I get my W2, uh, W in to be 23.66 kilojoules, okay? So I'm looking at part A, I'm looking at part B. This is 23.58, this is 23.66. You, so you can see where I'm actually, you know, the error is not that big at all, okay? This is more accurate than this guy. But remember this, the T2, the temperatures that I'm working with is in the range of 365 to 300, okay? And the CV was given at 300, so I'm not really, you know, uh, ranging a lot from there, okay? Just want to highlight. Part C is actually the way that I personally uh, do it. So I still write WN is M U2 minus U1. So far so good. And now I'm going to go to revisit table A17, this ideal gas table, and that is basically as a temperature of, uh, excuse me, function of temperature I gave the internal energies. So 300 is there. Uh, because I'm going to need it, and I need 365.7, right? So I'm going to look at these uh, three values. This so becomes 24.07, 257.24, 246.46. And this was, as you know, 365.7. I do some interpolation, and I got myself 261.355. That's what it becomes, and this unit is kilojoule per kilogram. You may remember this. We talked about this a lot, right? Okay, then I, uh, you know, I'm simply gonna use that WN will be M 0 0.5 kilogram. U2 is I'm looking at it 265.355 minus the T at uh, or rather the U at T is equal to 300 Kelvin is 214.07, and when I multiply this, I get myself 23.64 kilojoules. Okay. Okay, the same comment uh, stays over here. So the, actually the most uh, appropriate one is this one. This, as you can see, pretty much spot on. This is a slight error, but not a big deal because of the temperatures that we're dealing with, okay? All right, that's gonna do it for me. Thank you for watching this uh, segment and uh, me solving this particular question. Have a great day, bye-bye.